Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Power Is Now. My name is Eric Frazier. Thank you for joining me this evening. It's Tuesday night, April 7th, and another first-time homebuyer seminar. I appreciate those of you who tune in every first and third Tuesday of the night, 7.30 in the evening, to learn about financing real estate and the opportunities to buy real estate. It's all happening right here on The Power Is Now. We are live on Facebook for those of you who are listening to our podcast on Blog Talk Radio. We want to encourage you to share this video tonight uh, with your friends and family. There's going to be a lot of things we're going to talk about today that will uh, that may make a, di- a difference in your decision to buy uh, and or what to buy or when to buy. And of course, with the COVID-19 virus really impacting the world, uh, there's a lot happening that's creating a lot of uncertainty in the marketplace. So uh, my goal tonight is not only to educate you about first-time homebuyer programs, but also to hear from our professionals who can share what's happening in their market as well. So thank you again for joining me this evening and being a part of the show. And I really appreciate my VIP agents who are with me tonight. And every, you know, every first and and third Tuesday, we, we come together to learn about the opportunities, about interest rates, and I'm going to cover that tonight, and about uh, the, more importantly, the guidelines and what it takes to buy a home today. Now, in addition to being the host of The Power Is Now, I'm also a vice president and mortgage advisor for First Bank. First Bank is a national lender that's been around since uh, 1910, and uh, my license number as a mortgage advisor is 461807. The views and opinions that I express on this show are my own and do not necessarily reflect that of First Bank. Now, uh, tonight we're going to uh, play a video about uh, what's happening in the market. And we have Barbara Cochran, you've heard of her, uh, on Shark Tank. And I thought she did an excellent job in uh, talking about what people should do Uh, given what's happening in the marketplace. So we're going to start the show with that. Uh, But before we do, uh, let me introduce our special guests, who are not just special guests, but they are uh, permanent guests, if you will, on The Power Is Now. We have a program called the VIP Agent Program. These are real estate professionals that we uh, support, that we endorse, uh, that we recommend Uh, If you are looking to buy or sell your home, you can find an agent right on thepowersnow.com under VIP agent. It's right on the menu bar in your area that can help you identify a property, help you navigate through the challenges of buying a property. And if you think about selling a home, they can help you with that as well. So I'm going to ask my uh, VIP agents to turn the videos on. And uh, we're going to start with uh, Jenny Gonzalez. Uh, she is uh, an extraordinary real estate agent out of uh, Corona, California. And uh, any, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, tell everybody where you're at and how to, how to reach, reach out to you. Hi, everyone. This is Jenny Gonzalez with Keller Williams Corona. And my license number is 01249788. My cell phone number is 951-316-0374. And my email is jengonzalezre at gmail.com. I work the area of Corona, but I also work all of Southern California and especially the Inland Empire. Thank you, Jenny. Now, in addition to Jenny, uh, and well, in addition, we have other VIPs we're going to introduce to you tonight, but uh, Jenny is going to come back and tell you a little bit about some opportunities that are available to buy. In fact, she has some listings herself, and so look out for that information. Uh, next is Success Money. That's right, Success Money. Welcome, Success. Hi, Eric. Thank you for having us and for doing this wonderful show. As you said, my name is Success Money. I'm CEO of Super Agents Worldwide with Keller Williams Inglewood. My DRE number is 01800466. You can email me at imsuccessmoney at kw.com or give me a call at 833-243-6883. I work all over Los Angeles County, as well as San Diego and Anlo Valley area. So if you're looking to buy, sell, or invest, or even rent, reach out to me because I'm here to help. Thank you, Success. 
Success will be coming back shortly and talking about some opportunities to buy in our market area as well. Next up is Peggy Simmons. Welcome, Peggy, to The Power Is Now. Well, thank you, Eric, for having such an awesome um, program for the VIP agents this evening. I am um, thrilled to be here again, uh, and certainly COVID, you know, one nine, COVID-19 is really having an impact in the Phoenix area. Earlier today, I was dealing with a cancellation on a contract. So, you know, it's been an awesome, um, awesome opportunity to still be there for our buyers. Uh, my mm -hmm. market that I share and that I serve, I um, work in the Tempe, Arizona area, but I do service all of Phoenix Metro. And that includes Scottsdale, Paradise Valley, Goodyear, Chandler, Gilbert, Tempe, and I will even go as far as Maricopa, uh, which is Pinal County, and also to Queen Creek. Um, it's an awesome time to still invest in Arizona. Our prices are still very affordable. Uh, and we look forward to, if you have any referrals, I am always happy to handle your referrals coming to Arizona. So as a 34 year uh, experienced agent slash broker owner, I am thrilled to be here for you. So thanks, Eric. Thank you, Peggy. And actually, Peggy, before you go, uh, tell us uh, how to reach you, your, your name, your license number, and your telephone number. Sure. My company's name is Realty Marketing Group. Um, I established that company in 2009 uh, in the middle of the crazy crash. Uh, I am the designated broker owner. Uh, my phone number is 480-201-0654, 480-201-0654. And again, uh, my broker's license number is BR0695-3000. Thank you, Peggy. So uh, folks, we're going to come back to our VIP agents uh, in a few minutes here, and uh, they're going to share uh, some opportunities to purchase real estate in their particular market area. At this time, I would like to invite you to share this video, especially if you are a real estate professional, uh, please share the video, uh, start a watch party if you like, uh, for others to learn about what's going on in uh, real estate uh, throughout the uh, United States here, at least and a few uh, counties we will uh, address this evening. And then also what's happening in the mortgage market. So I, I believe that um, we are in a very dynamic environment right now where the only thing we can count on is change. And change is happening every single day. And it's impacting everyone and everyone from loss of job uh, to uh, changes in underwriting and uh, guidelines to qualify for loans. Uh, a lot is happening. And so uh, I was uh, I was shared a, a video from uh, Good Morning America in which Barbara Cochran, who is a well-known and respected real estate professional, entrepreneur, uh, and billionaire, I believe, uh, talking about what is going on and how people should uh, really uh, handle their various situations. And so without any further ado, uh, I'm going to play this uh, video, and then I'm going to ask my uh, VIP agents also to be prepared to uh, comment as we uh, talk about uh, Barbara's uh, perspective on things and the advice that she is providing to others. Challenges brought on by this crisis. We know people are out of work in just the past two weeks. That's obviously making it hard for people to pay their bills, including rent and mortgage payments. Let's bring in Shark Tank's Barbara Corcoran to answer some of your tough questions this morning. And Barbara, thanks for being with us. We're going to start with Malisha. She's one of millions of Americans worried about uh, making those rent payments. She rents her home. Take a listen. I see that uh, homeowners have been receiving assistance and coverage for their mortgages. But what happens to the renters that are renting from them that are receiving this forgiveness? How are renters supposed to make it through this crisis? Yeah, Barbara, what are her options? Well, all renters are in a tough spot right now, and hopefully there's more help coming. But already in most of the states, we have moratoriums, so tenants cannot be evicted. And that's good to remember. And that's through May, and chances are very good they'll extend that month by month. If someone has lost their job because of the illness or because of the pandemic, they should be calling their landlord right away and simply telling them that they're struggling. And chances are very good that landlords today will defer some of their rent. Defer simply means not that you don't you get off scot-free, but that you pay less now and then you make up for it later when you're back on your feet. 
And Barbara, let's go from renting to home ownership. For the week of March 22nd, there's been a 34% drop in new listings compared to this time last year. And our viewer, Irma from Los Angeles, she's wondering whether she, whether she should move forward with her plans to buy a house. Take a look. With the pandemic that's going on right now, is this the right time to purchase a home? Um, my goal was by the end of the year to purchase a home, but the rates are low right now. Should I take advantage of that or should I wait? What is your input on that? That's a very good question. Barbara, you're the ultimate real estate expert. So should she wait or not? And what do you see happening to inventory and prices over the next week or the ne next weeks or the next months? Yeah. Uh, let me ask, uh, let me answer Irma's question first directly to her. Uh, yes, Irma, you should be moving forward uh, despite your concerns and your fears, and that's quite natural. Interest rates are, are at an all-time low, but remember in the LA market, there's a short supply of homes and there has been continuing rising prices. If you wait, you're just gonna pay more for that house once the market is flooded by buyers. So now is really the time to get ready, get pre-qualified for your mortgage so you know what you can borrow and get out shopping so that you really know values and you know to move early and you'll be there first once the market resumes. And about the real estate, if you want me to keep, keep talking, I will, keep okay? <laughs> but the real estate market in general, I, I would love to address. The real estate market is stalled right now, but one thing for sure is it ain't going away. Uh, agents can't show, buyers can't shop, and sellers are scared. But lower price homes, interestingly, across the nation are selling very well, despite what's going on. And once the market resumes, this real estate market across the board is going to explode. And there's one thing to always remember, and on certain times, there's always deals to be had. So if you're brave of heart, and you're out there actually being aware of what values are and watching what's going around, you're gonna recognize a sweetheart deal when you see it. And everybody gets a sweetheart deal in a tough market if they're brave enough to keep out there. And that's where buyers should be if they're serious about buying. All right, Barbara, and also we've been talking about renters, but there are also the people who own those rental properties who have concerns. Leon is worried about his loss of income. Let's take a listen. I have four rental units that I purchased in the last seven years. Recently, I lost two tenants due to the outbreak. I am afraid that I won't be able to cover mortgage payments, taxes, and insurance at the end of the year. What would you do in my situation? Yeah, Barbara, what can Leon and other landlords do in these times? Well, Leon, there's really no perfect answer, but I could certainly tell you what I would do. I would get in touch with my two biggest people that are giving me the biggest bills, which are the mortgage company and your taxes, okay? If you address those two big bills, it's gonna make a big difference. You should reach out to your lender to see what they're willing to do. Commercial lenders right now are either waiving interest rates and late fees, they're converting loans to interest only, or they're even in some instances offering to defer payments until this epidemic is over. So you won't know unless you reach out to them and see what they're willing to do. Next, you should contact your tax authority and stay in touch with what their position is. It's always changing and everybody's making deals right now. Every town makes their own deals and you should know what that is. And last of all, you should not be desperate and sell those units. You've worked hard for seven years to own them. And once this whole thing is over, they're gonna jump up and down. So the last thing you wanna do is think about unloading those homes. All right, Barbara Corcoran, as always, incredible advice. Thank you so much. So thank you, uh, Barbara Corcoran, for that great information. And um, I saw this video and I thought, geez, I really need to share this because she says some things that I think are so important for everyone to take into consideration. And um, I'm going to just uh, give you a few takeaways uh, from uh, what I heard Barbara say. Uh, the first thing she said, uh, and you know how appropriate for her to make this statement, on the night in which uh, you know we are having a first time home buyer seminars, and that is renters are in a tough spot. They are in a tough spot. The reality is folks, is that the only really, the best way to avoid being in a tough, tough, tough spot as a renter is to be a homeowner. As a homeowner, there are just far more opportunities for you to uh, navigate through economic cha uh, challenges, through natural disasters through uh, unemployment or loss of job or sickness or illness, the banks are bending over backwards. They are deferring payments. They're doing everything to help you stay in your home. Whereas uh, landlords, if it wasn't for the moratorium that uh, the government is putting on landlords to prevent them from evicting people, 
many people would be served already with three-day notices and would be on their way out. And so uh, I would say this is definitely a wake-up call for those of you who have been renting, who are still renting, and probably not taking homeownership serious, now is the time to act, if you are able to act. Unfortunately, when we wait until we have to do things, it rarely is the right environment to do it. I mean, I'm sure there's someone saying, doggone it, I wish I would have bought a house, and they're now unemployed. Or doggone it, I wish I would have bought a house, and they're laid off. Or doggone it, I wish I would have bought a house, and they are in ICU, you know, can't work because of the COVID, COVID virus. And so uh, I think that that first point she made really resonated with me. I'm gonna ask, uh, in fact, uh, all my VIPs, if you want to chime in here, I'm gonna take these one point at a time here. Uh, does anyone have any comment about uh, Barbara's first point and that renters are in a tough spot? I would like to address that. Sure. Um, I've been put making this point exactly as we were talking the other day, if you can afford a rent payment, you have a job and you have decent credit, there's absolutely really no reason why you can't afford a home. At this age where we have rates as low as they are and the inventory as low as it is, we have motivated sellers, there's absolutely no reason as far as I can see. Jenny and I did a, a listing uh, interview a couple of days ago, you can find that interview, a great property here in Riverside. And the payment was just about maybe $400 more than uh, what uh, the medium rent uh, is for the Corona area. And I was just, it just, you know, when you look at the numbers and the fact that uh, there is assistance for down payment and closing costs where you can get in with very little money, uh, I think the only reason why people are not buying or don't own is because they simply are not aware. I mean, to say anything other than that uh, would be pretty harsh, I think, and um, certainly wouldn't reflect well on their, their intelligence or their character, uh, because I just believe that uh, no one would rent if they could get in with very little money down, especially, or if they have the funds to buy, and if it could be close to or near or the same as what they're paying in rent. Encouraging them, let's, you know, keep submitting offers. But I have noticed submitting offers, you know, they're getting, those properties are getting under contract pretty quickly. The, the MLS has kind of put a hold on um, how many days the properties are on the market now. And, you know, everyone has to do virtual open houses. So it is a little bit more difficult to see the property and get it but you know if you are pre-approved we can help you if you're not pre-approved and get out there and get those houses while these rates are low and the down payment assistance is available and like you said you know after these 90 days you can't control what your landlord may do and they may not be able to control it because if they didn't have their finances in order and their house goes into foreclosure or they're no longer able to, you know, even have that property, you still will be in a situation having to move, having to relocate. Mm -hmm. And you just have much more advantageous if you own your own home to where yeah. you can take control of your finances, especially if you live in a home or a neighborhood where you want to stay there and, um, you know, you have your kids situated. So definitely yeah. buying a home. Yeah, success, you make a great point. And um, the reality is, is that landlords, you know, do have a mortgage to pay. And um, uh, this moratorium, uh, that is a, that this moratorium prevents them to take action on landlords, I mean, on renters. Uh, and some lenders are allowing the landlords and also owner occupant uh, homeowners, uh, some time, they're either going to defer some payments, what have you. Uh, but some are not and landlords may not have a choice in the matter once the moratorium is up than to start taking action and evicting people uh, because they have to pay the mortgage. And so it's not really an us against them, you know, renters versus owners. It at least is circumstantial. And the only way to survive uh, any type of disaster that's taking place right now, we're dealing with a pandemic. But, you know, a year from now, it could be a natural disaster. It could be a fire. It could be a flood. It could, be, uh, it could be war. You just never know what could uh, happen that would impact your, your 
your cash flow, your health, whatever, you know, that, that's enabling you to own a home. Uh, the other point Barbara made was that, uh, actually, uh, the host uh, made was that there's a 34% drop in listings. And uh, this is creating uh, a problem uh, already. Uh, there is low inventory. Uh, and with that low inventory, uh, also the fact that with the uh, lack of, with people being forced to stay home and laid off their job, there's a great deal of uncertainty about what the future holds. And uh, so his question was, should, should first time home buyers move forward with trying to buy in this marketplace? And I love her answer. She says, yes, you should move forward. Uh, we need to be uh, aggressive about it because uh, this situation represents opportunity. Uh, the, and she said, the first thing you need to do is to get pre-qualified uh, so you'll know what your purchasing power is. But the main thing is don't let fear stop you uh, from buying a home. I, I love that point. Do I have any comments from my uh, VIPs? Well, one of the things that uh, that I'd like to, to, to say about the first-time home buyers is because of the fear of some and others, it's an opportunity for you. Uh, because those that are in fear are going to sit on the sideline. But for you, if you're ready, if you're, you know, if your job is secure and you know that you're not at risk of being, you know, furloughed or laid off or let go, it's your opportunity to be out there with potentially less competition. So I think the fear of some is an opportunity for others. I like that. That's a quote. Uh, Peggy, we're going to put that on a, on the Zoom background. The fear of some is an opportunity for others. Is that an original? <laughs> uh, it's an original. <laughs> all right. All right. Peggy Simmons, the fear of some is an opportunity for others. And, you know, it's so true. You know, as a believer, I believe that the fear is of the devil. And uh, yes. they rob us of everything that is good and perfect in our life. You know, being fearful never gets you anywhere. No. In fact, uh, results in the loss of opportunity. So uh, thank you for sharing that. Do we have any other comments in regard to um, moving forward in spite of all the scary things we see going on? I do, Eric. Um, my, what we've been talking about with our office, we have daily office meetings at my office. So we're in the know and we talk about everything. After this is all over, the people that wait, they're gonna be in a flood in three to six months. They're going to be competing against all these buyers that are waiting for the market or the slowdown, which isn't going to happen. It's just going to be a big swamp of everybody flooding the market. The people that are buying now and aren't scared, we have ways to show you homes. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. got my gloves in the mail today. I have my mask. We have our <laughs> protocols. If that's the way we need to show homes, that's the way we need to show homes. If we can do it virtually, we do it virtually, but how does it feel when you're having to write 15 offers on 15 houses and you don't get one in six months? It doesn't wow. make any sense. Jenny, I love that. Great point. Uh, and because we have been in those markets before. We have been there before, you know, 10, 15 offers and you can't get anything done and you're competing with cash buyers. I mean, uh, to your point, look what's happening in the market right now. Uh, investors, people with cash may, uh, are buying up stock right now, companies at low values, blue chip stock at low values right now. They're taking advantage of that opportunity. What do you think they're going to do as uh, real estate does adjust? It will adjust initially as we go through this crisis. We don't know how worse it's going to get, how, much more how many more challenges we're going to have uh, until COVID reaches its peak. But we all believe that by the summer, because heat is going to be a great a factor in uh, helping to uh, address the virus and, and, and get us back to some type of normalcy. And it's ironic that while the heat rises and it kills the virus, or a lot of people dealing with it, guess what happens in the summer? It's the peak buying season. Kids are out of school. In fact, they're already out of school. And so I think Barbara said that in her, in her third point that the market is going to explode. And I, I don't think that's an understatement, folks. No, it's We're, not an understatement. No, We're talking no. about it now. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Now is the time to get in 
while people are waiting for it to explode. And we see property values just escalate in, in price because of demand. It's a basic equation. When there is a great deal of demand and low supply, prices go up. Now, unfortunately, here in California, and maybe you can tell us, uh, Peggy, what, what's happening in Arizona, but here in California, we've been dealing with low inventory. And so this has been a seller's market since the great financial crisis, practically, it's been a seller's market because of low supply. And uh, even though demand has been actually higher than normal because there are more qualified buyers due to the low interest rate. But even with all these qualified buyers, but when there's not enough inventory to meet that demand, that's still pushing the values up every single year. I don't think there's been a single year since the great uh, financial crisis 2008, that we've seen a significant dip of any type in yeah. property values across the uh, state of California. And California is not alone. This is happening in other places as well. What's going on in Arizona? Uh, so, so in Arizona, we're still, um, we're like you, um, experiencing um, low inventory amounts. Uh, still, we're having uh, multiple offers, especially if you are a buyer in that below 300 which I know you guys don't understand what that is. <laughs> but if you, we have buyers here that can still buy homes less than 300,000 and we're seeing multiple offers. As a matter of fact, a week or so ago, I had one where there were 12 buyers on this one property. Um, you know, and of course it went to the highest bidder and they're starting to still get a little bit crazy, but not as crazy as 2005, um, bidding above asking price, waiving appraisals and that kind of thing. Um, but, but it's still, you know, it's, it's very, very tough right now if you're trying to get a home below 300,000. And so I have another one, um, you know, when Jenny mentioned about the flood. Okay. So I tell people it is easier to walk on dry land because the market has dried up in terms of buyers than it is to walk in a flood. So I say walk on the dry land. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it folks. Another great quote from Peggy from Arizona. <laughs> I like that, Peggy. Yeah. It's definitely easier to walk on dry land than it is in a flood. And yes. uh, you really don't want to be competing with cash buyers, buyers who are willing to pay more, waive the appraisal, put 20, 30% down. I mean, that's what buyers are facing probably by the summer. Now is the, the power is now to buy. It really is. And um, I think Barbara makes another great point. The last point uh, that she made was about investors. And we saw that video of the investor who owns, I think he said seven properties. And think about that, man, seven properties and um, your tenants aren't paying. What in the heck do you do? Well, this is one of the reasons why when you are financing, looking to purchase an investment property uh, that uh, lenders require reserves. And the minimum is like two months reserves on a conventional owner occupied loan. But when you're buying an investment property, you may be required to have as much as six months in reserves per property that you own. For things just like this, when we are dealing with economic crisis or, or disasters of any type or pandemics, you know, as an investor, you must have reserves. And it's a recommendation I make to anyone buying investment property that you really need to think about not just the cash flow because you can get it at this price and the, the rents are coming in and you're going to make about five hundred to a thousand dollars a month in cash flow. Yeah, but what if they're not paying? You know, are you able to handle that payment and your mortgage and the other payments that come with it? Now, Barbara said the first thing you need to do in dealing with uh, a challenge like this is to talk with the mortgage company and see if they'll do something, defer payments, that kind of thing. Talk with the tax authority and see what they're doing. Maybe they'll uh, extend, maybe they'll waive late fees. I'm not sure, but you're definitely in a vulnerable position. At the same time, at the same time, this video we saw, folks, I want you to think about this. This guy is probably one out of every three landlords out there, maybe one out of every two that's facing something like this. And what do you think they're going to do if they can't get co cooperation from the landlord? They're going to sell. And that's going to add to inventory. And many of them are going to sell under distressed situations, which means that the property is going to be priced somewhat below market. This is another opportunity for buyers 
and investors who've done it right and for first time home buyers to get into the game because opportunity is knocking on the door. Do you have any uh, uh, feedback from my VIPs in regard to the last point? Yes, Eric, I wanted to comment on that. I mean, as well as the renters, as well as investors, people need to look at their personal economics. Like when you're going out for a loan to purchase another property, you have to have a game plan, even an exit plan and contingency plan. So, you know, no one knows what tomorrow brings, but you know, you know what's in your bank account, you know what you put away for a rainy day or you know, if you're um, saving up for even repairs and who knows, all kinds of things may go wrong with the properties being that people can't get out and get into them. And with us not being able to get out there and, you know, take listings and view properties or just the whole system as far as getting inspections done, like everybody has been slowed down. So I feel like it's a, it's a time for us to learn how to get a little bit more technical since, you know, some people, you can't meet with them in person to get that contract. So you're going to have to open the DocuSign, you know, and, <laughs> and you're going to have to, you know, watch the virtual tour or schedule an appointment. So, you know, with the, with the investors, I like what she said when you, you face it head on, like there's some people that'll just duck. You know, I deal with people helping, assisting them with their credit. And I say, you got to answer the phone. You know, you got to call them. You got to get a game plan and figure out what you're going to do with this. So, you know, getting ahead before you can't make that payment. You know, even though you have this 90 days, if you have money to make your payment, go ahead and make your payment. I mean, if you need to keep some reserve, make at least half the payment. Don't just go 90 days and not make any payment, whether you're renting are you on? Because the payments are still there. Like, they, it's still going to be there. <laughs> Success, a great comments. And man, you've said so much. I could do just a show on uh, how investors should deal with this crisis. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Uh, one thing that you said, it really resonates with me. And that is that investors uh, have to have a game plan. They have to have a game plan. You know, you go into invest in real estate, um, you need to not only just have a game plan, but you got to be really uh, committed to that game plan. So in talking about game plans, what are some of the things that you can do? One thing you can do is that just be real about your economic situation. Keep it real. You know, you've been absolutely depending upon the, the, the tenants to make rent because you have no reserves, no money in the bank. And now you, have, you, you face the prospects of not getting rent at all, maybe for three to six months, or having to evict the tenant, which will take you into six months to even a year. And so perhaps then you should be committed to selling the property. I mean, because your credit is more valuable to you than that property. You can always get another property at another time, but you might be uh, considering selling the property now while you can and uh, selling it at full price instead of under a distressed situation. Another option would be to look at um, uh, working out something with the tenant, lowering the rent so that you can receive some type of cash flow right now, you know, uh, and deferring the other part until the end of the lease. Act like a lender is going to act with you potentially if they're willing to uh, work with you at all. Uh, and then uh, lastly, you know, I think that there are always lessons to be learned always lessons to be learned anytime we go through something. And I, 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 I see this a lot, that they're just people, investors that are, cat, are, are real estate rich and cash poor. Let me tell you something, cash has been and always will be king. Has been and always will be king. Yes, cash also is the worst investment you can have. It depreciates every single year due to inflation but it is your best friend. It is your best friend. We're going through an economic disaster or a health crisis or anything like that, having cash. So you have to have a good balance between equity and cash because you cannot buy bread with equity. You cannot pay utility bills, you cannot pay medical bills. And especially if your situation has resulted in you being unemployed, then you can't even access the, the cash inequity in your home because you don't even have a job. And so maintaining a nice balance uh, between cash 
uh, available cash and equity, I think is a strategy that any financial planner will tell you you should do. Uh, do we have any final comments on this great video from Barbara Cochran and uh, Good Morning America, one of my favorite shows? Any final Just to add to what you were saying, Eric, with that cash and equity, you also want to keep your credit. So that's right. like you said, that credit is just as important. Cash is king, credit is queen. Because when you that's need it. to go get another property, they're going to need to see your credit. <laughs> Absolutely. Cash is uh, king, but credit is queen. Absolutely. And well, one of the things that Success said was answer the phone. Um, <laughs> I, I, I do remember in uh, 2008 when we were going through all of the foreclosures and the short sales and all of that, there were many people, um, I mean, we're talking millions of people that never answered the phone. And had they only answered the phone, the proposition from their lender could have been one that may have saved them. So, you know, for me, you know, success, thank you. Um, because I do remember, you know, personal clients that never answered the phone, but in the end of the whole scenario and the whole situations, there were offers that came to them that could have helped them out of their, out of their crisis. So, so thank you for reminding us that we need to tell our clients, answer the phone. Yeah, great points here. Any final points before we uh, go to the next section here of our uh, meeting tonight? I completely agree. And not only just communicating with landlords and with mortgage lenders, communicate with your credit card companies, yes. communicate with your car loan companies, whatever you have, because if you need to miss a payment on something, maybe they can give you a clue as to what might be best for, for you and maybe renegotiate at that time as well. Yes, absolutely. Communication is key uh, in life, right? You have uh, better business pa partners when you communicate. You have better relationships with your creditors when you communicate. You have better relationships with your children when you communicate. You have better relationships with your husbands and your wives when you communicate. I mean, communication is like foundational to relationship. You look up the word relationship in the dictionary, and I think the first word you'll probably see somewhere in that long paragraph of defining what, what uh, a relationship is, I'm sure communication will fall somewhere in that def definition. So communication is the key. Now, I want to transition here briefly, uh, and then uh, to... Uh, to qualifying for a mortgage and what the guidelines are right now. And then we're going to end the show with a, a brief overview of some a buying opportunities that exist uh, among the VIP agents on the phone right here. Now, we may run a little long. The show is scheduled from 7.30 to 8.30. So I'm gonna let you know in advance, we may go a little bit longer. If you have any questions, you can ask your questions in the chat room. And uh, all of my VIP agents uh, have their Facebook pages up and they can respond to your questions. Uh, and so will I too. And of course, you can drop us an email at eric.frazier at thepowersnow.com. Be happy to respond to you. Or you can call me directly at 714-475-8629. Now, I want to address uh, first-time home buyers who are in need of down payment assistance. And I do have some good news for you, that in spite of everything that's going on, down payment assistance is still available here in California. But I want you to know that that could change literally tomorrow. Uh, I could have a completely different uh, set of guidelines for you tomorrow as it relates to down payment assistance from two agencies that we use here at First Bank primarily. Now, First Bank is approved in about 49 states to originate loans. And so, obviously, I can't go over the housing finance agencies in every single state. But I want you to know that these housing finance agencies all have a tendency to follow each other's moves. So if someone makes a change, they all make a change. And it's not absolute, but that's kind of what happens. And so uh, for the California Housing Finance Authority, they have a program that they will provide you with down payment assistance. It's called My Home. And the interest rate is crazy low on that loan. It's an actual loan for the down payment. The maximum is $10,000 or 3.5% of the purchase price. $10,000 or 3.5% of the purchase price. 
the interest rate is low. It's around 3% interest. And the interest, uh, there is no payments, by the way, whatsoever on the loan, no payments at all for the life of the loan. So at the end of 30 years, uh, then you have to pay off that $10,000 or 3.5% plus interest, right? Now you can make payments at any time, uh, at any amount throughout the life of the first mortgage. Maybe you wanna pay it off, maybe you don't. So um, the goal is, is that to get into the home and the state of California Housing Finance Agency is willing to lend you the money, three and a half percent or $10,000, whichever is less, all right, whichever is less, at a low interest rate around 3%, it may even be lower now, no payments on that loan whatsoever until you pay off the first mortgage. Now, you can sell the home at market value, keep all the money, let's say you stay there 10 years, and it's doubled in value, you're rich now, sell the property, and from those proceeds, pay off that $10,000 loan and the uh, interest that's accrued. Or if you want to refinance because interest rates drop to 0%, <laughs> that'd be a good, a, good, a good opportunity to refinance. You could do so. And at that time, you would have to include in that refinance the payoff of that mortgage. Now, if you get behind, you go into default, like, uh, and that's, that's a bad thing, then you'll have to pay off that loan if you go into default. And, um, or if you lose the home, then, of course, the mortgage everything is gone. So we, we want to avoid that from happening. So you need to have reserves, you need to be prepared for disasters like we're experiencing now uh, to deal uh, with the mortgage payments. Now, if you're buying a home in uh, you know 300,000 range, that's just about the entire down payment. So it's a great deal. But you also have closing costs to pay. And they have a program called ZIP, Zero Interest Program. Now the interest rate on this loan is zero and it's for the closing costs only. And they will give you 3%. So if, a, if you're buying a $500,000 house, that's $15,000 at zero interest loan that they'll give you. And you don't have any payments whatsoever on this, just like on the other program, no payments. And the same rules apply. You can sell the house and pay it off at that time. Or if you refinance, you can pay it off. Or if you go in default, it has to be paid off. But that money can be used for the closing costs. So think about it for a moment. You have help on the down payment, you have help on the closing costs. Now, the maximum sales price on this program, I believe is 790, yeah, 795,000, almost $800,000 is the maximum sales price. So if you're buying something up there in the, in the 700,000 range, you know, obviously uh, 10,000, you're gonna be a little short on the down payment, especially FHA is three and a half percent, right? So you're gonna be a little short on the down payment, so you're gonna have to have some money. But if you're buying your first time, your first time home buyer, uh, then and you're buying something in the 300 to 400,000 range, I mean that 10 grand goes a long way in reducing your down payment. Now here's some rules of engagement uh, to participate in this program. First, it's only in California, right? So you got to buy here in California. Secondly, it has to be your primary resident. It can't be a second home, can't be an investment property, and you have to be a first time home buyer, which means that you could not have owned a home in the last three years, right? So no home ownership in the last three years. There is an exception to that if you've inherited property. Uh, and if you want to know about that exception, you got to give me a call. Now, the other thing is, is that you have to have good credit, right? Now, the FICO score requirement just a week ago, folks, was 660 for an FHA loan. Now it is raised to 680 for an FHA loan. And so the requirement to have good credit uh, is continuing to increase on down payment assistance. And the reason for that is because of defaults. Uh, people are getting behind, people are not making payments, and it's impacting everyone else that would like an opportunity to take advantage of this program. So in addition to that, the market, the mortgage market in general is deteriorating. There are millions of people who have lost their jobs and aren't able to make their mortgage payment. And so the only way that lenders can kind of hedge against that for new people coming into the existing, there's nothing they can do about those who are in already who bought their home with a 640 or 660 FICO score. But for new people coming in, 
they don't want to deal with this. And there is a direct correlation between your FICO score and your willingness to pay no matter what, your credit, your character. I mean, that's unfortunately, statistics kind of bear that out. The higher the FICO score, the lower the delinquency. And so this is just the beginning, unfortunately, because even though we may see the coronavirus uh, somewhat dissipate as we move into the summer months and the heat and, and the vaccines that are coming and all the social distancing and all the strategies that are at play right now start to take effect uh, and the economy then you know, starts to turn back on, uh, there are many businesses that are out of business forever. There are many companies, it's not gonna, they're not gonna spring back like a, a gymnast uh, who you know, falls on his back. There, it's gonna take a minute for this economy to get back to where it was. And as a result of that, people are gonna struggle for a while getting caught up. And so I anticipate a mortgage market that will continue to deteriorate and lenders reacting to that and tightening and continuing to tighten the underwriting guidelines. And they've already started. I'm gonna share with you what the guidelines are now just for a standard loan without down payment assistance or closing costs. But before I do, I wanna just end with the CalFHA product. And that is, if you have a FICO score of 680 and uh, you're looking to buy, now is the time to buy. Before that 680 becomes 720, and that 720 becomes 740. And in addition to that, the debt ratio requirement for CalFHA is 45, a 45 back end ratio. That is very difficult to meet for many people. I anticipate that the debt ratio will go down to 43, maybe even to 40, as they try to strengthen, uh, to, to only bring into their portfolio, their pool of loans, only very, very strong and qualified buyers. Now, another program is the Golden State Fund. And this pro program is very similar to the CalFHA product and that they provide a loan for the down payment assistance except theirs is 4% and it can be for the down payment assistance and for the closing costs. And that's 4% of the purchase price. Now the maximum loan amount is 510,400 as opposed to CalFHA, they'll go to the high balance limit. But 510,400 is the maximum loan amount. Another great thing about this program is that they're not limited to just the single family homes, whereas the CalFHA product is. You not only must be a first time home buyer, but it can only be a single family home. But the Golden State product, you don't have to be a first time home buyer and you can buy up to four units. Again, though, the maximum loan amount is 510, 400,000. Now, what's also great about this program right now is that the minimum FICO score is still 640, 640. And so I am just praying that they keep it that way. We need some agency out there to show some leadership for the little guy, for the first time home buyer, for the low to moderate income buyer. Please keep the FICO score at 640. Don't raise the FICO score, my goodness, because we are impacting those who need to buy a home the most. And that is the low to moderate middle income. What's happening to middle America? I tell you, it is going away rapidly. Now, another great thing about this program is that not only do you not have to be a first time home buyer, and not only can your FICO score be as low as 640, and not only do they give you 4%, the full 4% on a $500,000 purchase, that's 20 grand. They give you a loan for the full 4%, and that loan has the same terms, no payments, except that there's no interest. With the CalFHA product, there's interest on their down payment assistance. There's no interest on the closing cost assistance, but there's interest on the down payment assistance. On this program, they'll give you a loan to 4% and there is no interest at all on this money. And get this, after three years in the program, three years of making your payments on this program, on the first mortgage, there's, there's no payments on the, on the down payment assistance, they forgive the loan. Can you believe that? They forgive the loan. It's completely forgiven. And so, I mean, you have gotten into a home with, you know, 20 grand. I mean, who's going to give you 20 grand, right? Come on. We have family members that won't give us 
a grand, forget about 20 grand, right? And so this is really incredible that they'll do this. Now it gets better, it gets better. Thank God for our first responders. These people are putting their lives on the line, police officers and healthcare workers. And, and then even, you know, I mean, just about anybody and firefighters, they're all out there man, facing this virus head on and, and doing their best to support all of us who are quarantined, are self-quarantined in our homes. Well, on this program, they will uh, consider the 4% down payment assistance an absolute grant from day one if you are a first re responder. I'm talking about it's not a loan for three years. It's a grant from day one. They're giving you the money uh, to support who you are, what you do. And it's not just limited to first responders. It's also to teachers and professors and university systems and charter schools. If you're in the teaching profession, if you are an administrator for the school, you work for the school district, K through 12 or college, or community colleges. If you're a policeman, a fireman, a, a e EMT, if you are a first responder, uh, the, state, the Golden State Finance Authority is willing to give you the help you need to buy a home. Now, this is really incredible to me. And I, I just, uh, I, I am very passionate about helping first time home buyers. Uh, and when you look at what's going on in society, minorities are being impacted the most anytime there's any kind of economic disaster, national disaster, I mean, uh, natural disaster, any type of problem like this on a global or local scale, minorities are impacted the worse they are. And the homeownership rate for minorities across the board is the lowest of all groups. And so I'm very passionate uh, to assist in any way I can, people who are serious about buying a home. And what, what says you're serious to me is that you take action immediately. You gotta go to applytobuynow.com and apply online. You should do it tonight, get pre-approved. We can turn your pre-approval around in one day if you get us everything we need. And you can find a house literally in one to two days. My wife just helped a buyer who was pre-approved and she found them a house on one outing, one, it was one day, they went into contract, one day. And the only reason why is not because she's a great salesperson, because she is, it's not because she's a knowledgeable real estate agent, because she is, not because she knows what's going on in her market area, because she does, but it was none of those reasons. It was because the buyers were absolutely committed to find something and they didn't have champagne taste and beer budgets, right? They didn't, they were realistic. They wanted to get in and thank God they did because the guidelines have changed and are continuing to change. And so I wanna now share with you for those, for it doesn't matter what state you're in now, this is what you're dealing with now. And uh, cause I can't get into the down payment assistance in some of the other areas, especially due to a lack of time. But right now for all FHA, VA, and USDA loans. VA to cars, no money down, FHA 3.5% down, right? The minimum FICO score right now uh, at First Bank is 680, I mean 660. And we're about to raise those scores to 680, right? Across the board, because it's already happening. The mortgage market is deteriorating. And so lenders are just putting that on new people coming into the mortgage market. You're gonna have to uh, support uh, the mortgage uh, uh, portfolios here in banks across the country by being a highly qualified buyer. And so not only is your minimum FICO score for FHA, VA, and USDA going to have to be 680 or higher. I mean, today, 660 for First Bank. I expect for us to go to 680 as well, just like everybody else. But I'm giving you what's happening in general across the board. The maximum debt ratio is 50. Maximum debt ratio is 50. For down payment assistance is 45, all right? And we expect for that number to drop as well. If you are utilizing down payment assistance and the first mortgage is not coming from the party providing the down payment assistance, like in the case of the Golden State Finance Authority, they are the ones actually funding the FHA, VA, USDA loan. They are buying the loan. And so their guidelines apply. 
But if the lender is providing the loan, the first mortgage, and you are getting down payment assistance from an outside entity, you're looking at a minimum score of 700 right now, 700 and a maximum debt to income ratio of 43%. That's what's happening, folks. FICO scores are going up and they will continue to go up. And that's for FHA, VA, USDA. On conventional loans, we're seeing, uh, this is conventional Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. We're seeing a minimum of 620 to now 640. And we're looking at pricing adjustments if a person is pulling out any cash out on a refinance. And so you're gonna pay a higher rate and in some cases, being able to pull cash out may be eliminated altogether for people who have been, you know, people who've been waiting, let me see what's gonna happen in interest rates. Let me see if they're gonna get lower. And now all of a sudden the rates are lower, but now lenders aren't allowing cash out, right? I mean, you folks, the only thing you can count on is change. Now, these things are happening. It's not, it's happening in general. It's happening day by day. Companies are adopting these policies. One bank follows another bank, another bank follows another bank. Before you know it, all the banks are at the same place. Um, if you are getting, again, if you're using down payment assistance for uh, uh, on, a, on a conventional loan, then you're looking at 700 FICO scores, debt ratios of 43%. This is, uh, you know, I do a lot of first time home buyer business. And uh, unfortunately, um, my buyers typically don't have down payment and closing costs, and they typically don't have FICO scores in the 700s, or even for that matter, in the 660s. And so this is impacting me and all the clients that I've been working with, and uh, it's going to get potentially worse before it gets better. And you don't have to be an economist just to see ahead. I mean, just think about it. Do you really think that we're going to be recover overnight? Do you think that tomorrow, you know, if there was a cure or the you know, the summer comes and we have nobody dying and less and less cases being reported every day, that all of a sudden overnight, the economy is gonna go back to a 3.5 unemployment rate and the GDP and all these things. But no, it is not gonna happen that way. This is going to, it, you, know, you know, it's kind of like reputation. It takes years to develop a great reputation, but only a minute, not even a video, uh, 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 a radio spot, a conversation to tear down a reputation for a lifetime. And it's, when it comes to the economy, it takes, it, it's, taken, it's taken 10 years to get to where we are, where we were in this economy. And it's only taken a virus and a matter of not even a couple of months to bring us to our economic knees. It's gonna take a lot to take us back to where we once were, and it's going to take time to get there. All right, uh, I'm going to open up the lines uh, for any commentary uh, from my special guests, my VIP agents. And again, folks, if you're thinking about buying or selling, now is the time to act. If you need help, go to thepowersnow.com and you'll see on the menu bar VIP agents. We have VIP agents in Arizona and New Jersey and Texas. We have VIP agents from Northern California to Southern California, people who are vetted, endorsed, experienced, and ready, willing, and able to help you to achieve your goal of home ownership. Hi, Eric. So I'm so glad that I know you <laughs> because out of all the lenders that have come into the office, not hardly any of them share down payment assistance and so many different resources that you provide. And by getting on these webinars and attending stuff, I've become very knowledgeable to assist my clients even more. So I'm really hoping that the offer and the pre-approval we just got <laughs> gets accepted before any, you know, credit rates change or, you know, anything like that. But with that uh, Platinum program, I've been so excited. I've been pulling every property from Kingdom Come in California to see about who wants to buy these properties, you know, everything four units and under 510. Originally, I only found about 52 properties in the whole state. It kind of went down to 36. And of course, they're, they're not getting approved by FHA. They need some, some work or, you know, something else is going on with them. But 
I did have a buyer that we got pre-approved and we're look, looking to use the platinum program and save him some money. So I want to say thank you so much and appreciate it. So let's just, you know, keep it moving, you guys. Thank you, success. And uh, I'm glad you're committed to working with first time home buyers. You know, there are a lot of agents out there who don't like working with buyers. In fact, uh, someone told me one time, every agent wants to be a listing agent, you know, and I get it, you know, uh, uh, who doesn't want to be a listing agent? And those opportunities are going to be coming soon. I think the market is going to improve significantly. And it's for the wrong reasons. It's going to improve because we have investors that are going to be liquidating. We have people who have lost their jobs and not able to recover from it, going to be selling. We have foreclosures are going to be happening across the board. Uh, and it's, it's, so the market, the inventory is going to improve all for the wrong reasons. And uh, what can we do about it? But just be prepared for those who are not homeowners uh, to take advantage of these new opportunities. And you got to get ready. Take advantage of the programs that are available right now. And even though the FICO scores may continue to rise, that means that you need to stop borrowing, start focusing on your credit and being prepared uh, for the next, uh, for the opportunities that come. Do we have any other comments? Jenny. Hey, Eric, I want to, um, I did a little research as we were doing this and a couple of months ago, we were talking about the price ranges here in Corona and how the medium house um, sales price right now is around 615 to 618. Um, I was looking at the inventory because I had a buyer like a few months ago looking to 420. I couldn't find any single family residence 420 worth you know looking at. And I popped on tonight and there's 10 beautiful properties between four and 450 in Corona. I even saw a five bedroom for under 450 in Corona. So if wow. anybody's interested, hop on, hop on the train. Wow, great, Jenny. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and I think that is just the beginning of what we're going to see. The question is, are you prepared to make the move, right? And are you, uh, are you ready to act, you know, right now? Because the power is now to buy. Um, do we have any other uh, comments? Uh, Miss uh, Peggy from Arizona, uh, drop some uh, wisdom on us. <laughs> well, you know, just to hear that there are properties, she's excited about properties being in the $400,000 price point. Uh, I'm excited if I can get one in the 300 and below. So, <laughs> but yeah, um, you know, just uh, even thinking about the opportunity for those that are really going to need us, um, you know, knowing that you know, I heard a, a talk show this morning and she was talking about not being able to survive the social distancing in, in, in the house with her husband. And she was saying that she's probably going to end up getting divorced because they've never been in the house for that many hours, you know, together. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there are going to be some opportunities. And as Eric said, the good or the bad, yes, there's going to be some opportunities for some bad reasons. And uh, I'm just excited about it, but I'm just a little dismayed Eric, that I've only just now heard about these raising, rising of the FICO score demands. I mean, that's just really going to put a damper. Not only do we have COVID-19 or 19, but now we got to deal with having higher FICO scores. Yeah. Yeah, it is, um, it is uh, the market's reaction uh, to what's happening. And that is, uh, you know, first payment defaults. Think about the thousands of mortgages uh, I'm, 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 put, let me change that, not the thousands, you know, the millions of mortgages yeah. originated just in the last 60 days. Mm -hmm. And people are not able to make their first payment, first payment defaults. And when a, when a, when a borrower doesn't make their first payment, especially on an FHA loan, and it may be the case on all loans, then uh, it's not uh, insurable. So lenders may be forced to buy back that loan. And if they do that, then that's ultimately, depending on how many buybacks they have, it's going to put them out of business. Mm -hmm. Because what works is that from mortgage banks who use warehouse lines, lines of credit to fund loans, they have to fund those loans according to guidelines and the borrower has to make their first payment. In order uh, for that loan to be sold, 
they will sometimes retain the servicing of that loan, so you make payments. Sometimes they sell it with the servicing rights, but their goal is to get it sold so they can get their money back, pay off that line of credit, and, and continue to make more loans. Same thing with banks who may not have the costs associated or the risks associated with warehouse lines. They have money on deposits. You know, they're federal savings banks like, like uh, First Bank, you know? Uh, so their cost of funds are lower. Uh, they're able to uh, maybe stay in the game longer because they have millions of dollars uh, available to them to invest in mortgages, be able to sell to the secondary market and get it back. But if they can't sell those loans because the payments aren't being made, the first payment's not being made, are there, uh, are there other problems associated with, and then they're forced to hold onto that loan until they're able to sell it, or they may have to sell it to an alternative market at a significant di discount, costing them thousands of dollars mil per transaction, millions of dollars uh, in, say, a portfolio of loan, a pool of loans. And so uh, this crisis is very, very serious. And so the lenders are reacting, because there's nothing they can do now with what has been done. Everything that's been funded, <laughs> they are completely at risk and they are there are ceos and cfos and major shareholders on their knees praying to god right now that people make their payments and that they can sell these pools of loans that they have and get their money back because if they can't then uh, they're in some serious trouble and so there are many who are predicting uh mergers and acquisitions and failures that will result as a result of this crisis. And, uh, and, as we're, and because of this risk that they currently have with their existing portfolio, they're passing that on to new buyers and requiring them to be stronger in credit, stronger in reserves, stronger across the board. Uh, it's either that or not take on any new buyers at all, just shut down and focus on, on uh, managing their existing portfolios and uh, doing their best to keep people doing, devising strategies and plans to keep uh, the portfolios uh, sound, keep people paying, providing them the assistance they can. And then on top of that, you know, you have Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, you have HUD uh, coming up with programs where people are able to defer their payments at, you know, that's a, a, a great benefit of being a homeowner. But be some consequences to lenders as a result of all of this, as well as to buyers who still have to face the music at some point and paying those mortgages that are in the rears. All right, there's a lot going on, folks. And um, our next show is going to be on uh, today is the seventh, so the 21st. On the 21st, please mark your calendar to April 21st. It's every first and third. Uh, Tuesday from 7.30 to uh, 8.30. Uh, but we're going to be changing the time. Uh, the time of that show is going to be changed to 7 o'clock. So we're going to start a little earlier, and we're going to go from 7 o'clock to 8.30. All right? We don't want to go to 9. We're going to go from 7 to 8.30. So my social media managers, my marketing team, please note that they're hearing this for the first time. So change everything, guys. We're going from 7 to 8.30, 7 to 8.30, starting April 21st, right here on the Powers Now, First Time Home Buyer, live on Facebook. Now, if we've said something tonight that really resonated with you, I mean, if you truly appreciate the information that has been shared and the encouragement and the instruction, uh, we're asking you to share the information. You know, knowledge is power. We all agree with that, right? But don't you want to empower your family members, your friends, your neighbors? If you do, then share this video, right? Share the video. I'm asking all of my VIP agents, those that are on, and those who are watching on Facebook couldn't make it tonight, please share this video to your entire Facebook family and to your groups that you're in. This is good information. People are not aware of it. Sell it to you, share it to your fellow agents. If you're a real estate professional, share the information. Not only do you share uh, this show tonight, but we have other information that you should consider sharing. First of all, all of our shows are podcasts. And you can find them on blogtalkradio.com forward slash the power is now. 
You can find them on Blog Talk Radio, and they're syndicated to iTunes, TuneIn. Please subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. And you can listen to these shows that are live that begin right here on Facebook and then uh, go to our podcast platform. Also, uh, this show is on YouTube. Please uh, subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is a fully edited show. And so there's additional information and commercials that are be available on each show on uh, YouTube. YouTube.com forward slash the power is now. Also, we have this month, the April magazine. April is Fair Housing Month. And the Fair Housing Act of 1968 made it possible for people of color, for people dis uh, with disabilities, people who, of different sexual orientation, to be able to buy a home. There was a time in this country where it was actual restrictions written in deeds preventing African Americans from being able to buy a home. And there were all kinds of discrimination uh, happening, preventing African Americans, minorities from being able to access credit. And so we celebrate the Fair Housing Act here at The Power Is Now. It's posted on all of our covers and all of our banners. And I'm, I'm just so happy to be a member of the Board of Directors of the Fair Housing Council of Riverside County where we are helping people exercise their rights that are available to them through the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the Fair Housing Right of 1968, and all the amendments that are preventing landlords from discriminating and real estate agents, believe it or not, discriminating, not showing people properties because of the color of their skin, as well as lenders from discriminating because of the color of their skin or their sexual orientation. So the Fair, House, the Fair Housing Act of 1968 is a big doggone deal to me. And it should be for anybody who is uh, a, of color and who believes in equal rights and opportunities for everyone. So on our magazine for the April edition, we have Monica Hill, who is the president of the California Association of Real Estate Brokers. This is the oldest black real estate trade association in the state of California. And in fact, it is the only one in the state of California. And it is a chapter of the National Association of Real Estate Brokers, which is the oldest minority trade association in the country, started in 1947 during the Jim Crow period. We're celebrating what it is to be a real TIS in the month of April. A real TIS is a real estate professional who was not allowed during the 1940s and 50s and 60s, I believe it wasn't until the 70s, to become a realtor, that is a member of the National Association of Realtors, all because of discrimination. And so because they weren't allowed to be realtors, they became real TIS and formed their own organization called the National Association of Real Estate Brokers. And so the month of April, we're celebrating homeownership and what it is to be a real TIS, supporting people of color and being able to achieve the goal of homeownership, the American dream, of homeownership, because it's always it hasn't always been an American dream uh, for people of color, but it is an American dream still for anyone who is in America that want to buy a home. You can do it. The programs are available. The people are available. The the you have the right to buy anywhere you desire to live, and to pay for any amount of house you can afford to buy. Nobody can stop you but you. And we can give credit to the 1964 Civil Rights Act and the 1968 Fair Housing Act and all the amendments that have came thereafter. So check out our magazine. Uh, the April edition is on thepowersnow.com. It's also posted in our Facebook and social media pages where you'll see Monica Hill, the president, the newly elected president uh, for the California Association of Real Estate Brokers. There are sections in the magazine about the Fair Housing Act you might learn something about it if you aren't aware of, of the Fair Housing Act and what it means. Well, I believe that uh, just about covers it all. I wanna give my VIP agents who have uh, joined me tonight an opportunity to have a final word and final comment as we close out this show. I'm gonna start the music in the background, guys. And so when the music in, the show's in, so don't be too long. This is Jenna Gonzalez with Kelwin's Corona been serving the community for 21 years and I would be happy to serve anybody else that is looking to buy or sell real estate and I 
totally appreciate this program and I hope everybody else is learning as much as we are. Hi, this is Peggy Simmons in Tempe, Arizona. Um, again, it is a privilege and certainly an honor, Eric, to be a VIP agent. Uh, and certainly my prayer is with those that have lost loved ones during this difficult time and those that are still suffering that may be hospitalized or even at home recovering. Um, it is not just about real estate for us. Right now, we're praying for all of our clients and all of our customers that if you are suffering, that you will make it through. Uh, but most of all, um, here in Tempe, Arizona, I am here to serve. Uh, and I've always had a vision and a desire to serve my people. Uh, my company, Realty Marketing Group, uh, we are here um, six days out of the week. Sunday is my day to worship. So please don't call me on a Sunday. Uh, but six days out of the week, I am here for you. My phone number is 480 201 0654-480-201-0654. I look forward to speaking with you. Thank you, Peggy. All right, guys. I uh, want to say thank you to Eric and the other VIP agents and also all of you for watching and sharing and especially to our um, essential workers and our uh, frontline workers. I want to say thank you to all of you. If you are in need of some property, reach me at I am success money dot kw dot com you can also check out the snapshots of all of la county if you're looking to get the down payment assistance program or if you need assistance with your credit um, you can email me at i am success money dot kw dot com or give me a call at 833-243-6883 and once again my dre number is 0180466 thank you eric for having us Thank you, success. Folks, if you need a VIP agent, please go to thepowerisnow.com. You can't miss it. It's right there on the menu bar. VIP agents from Arizona, New Jersey, Texas, and all over Northern and Southern California. I am honored to uh, support them, to endorse them. These are people that I know and trust and endorse that can help you acquire real estate or sell real estate. I also want to thank our first responders who are putting their lives on the line for us. So many police officers and people have died as a result of this virus. Firemen, I mean, just about every occupation that falls in the category of a first responder has passed away. So real lives are being impacted, families are being impacted, and they are truly in my prayers, and I have a heart full of gratitude and thanksgiving for them and what they do. I'm so happy there are programs available for first responders to help them buy a home. And if you are a first responder, a first responder, it would be my honor, my sincere honor to assist you in any way I can in, a, in obtaining a loan and getting with the right real estate professional that will support you through the process. Thank you everyone for watching this evening. Please tune in on the 21st of April at seven o'clock right here on facebook.com forward slash the power is now. Remember, we are at our best and we maximize our success when we act now. The power is now. Thank you for joining me.